if you don't do things right, if you make a mistake, you end up with something like that, and you want to avoid that. Uh, more mystery. There's actually hints of another neutrino. There was an experiment called LSND at Los Alamos that found an excess of anti -new E in an anti -new -new beam. Similarly, an experiment at Fermilab called Mini Boon, in which Nevis was involved, also found an excess. If you look at sources emitting anti-new uh, new E's, electron neutrinos, you don't find enough. If you look at reactors emitting anti-new E's, even if you get very close to the reactor before they have a chance to oscillate with the standard oscillations, you find not enough anti-new E's. This smells of an oscillation of new E's or anti-new E's going to new mu's and vice versa. Now, why is that of any import? We know oscillations exist, so why is that important? Well, given the energy and the distance of all these hints, what we find is if you want to use oscillations to explain them, it comes out with a mass difference of one electron volt, quite different from the other two that we know. Now, with the three neutrinos we know exist, we can only produce two mass differences, those two. So this one would require yet a fourth neutrino. Well, is that earth-shaking? We've got three, why not four? And the reason is that in neutrino interaction theory, all standard neutrinos interact with a particle called the Z0. This Z0 has been studied extensively at CERN in Geneva. And in particular, it was found to decay, as expected, into a new E and an anti, anti new E, or similarly with a muon and a tau neutrino. But in addition, it was found to decay only to these three, not to a fourth neutrino pair. So if there is a fourth neutrino, it does not interact with the Z0 as it ought to. And we refer to that as a sterile neutrino. It's something totally different, totally new, totally unexpected. So it's worth studying. And for that, there are three experiments, again at Fermilab, in yet another beam. But this time, because the mass difference is so big, you would expect oscillations over a very short distance. So the beam is not very long. Uh, there will be a first detector right at the beginning of the beam. Uh, called short baseline neutrino detector in which we're involved. That will measure what's in the beam before any oscillations can happen. And then another one called microboon, uh, in which again we're involved at 470 meters. And a third detector, which will come from Europe. It ran in the Grand Sasso lab next to Opera. And it will move to Fermilab. And it's those last two would measure to see if there is any oscillations. Microboon is now already taking data. Here's a picture of a physicist, Matt Toops, um, sitting inside the uh, TPC. And the picture is taken through the plane of wires. He's checking the wires. You can't really see the wire except through their ref the reflection of the light on them. Here's the TPC after it's been completed. And we've taken Matt Toops out, uh, it being inserted in the cryostat that will keep the argon cold. Here is our uh, spokeswoman, Sam Zeller, holding the detector up for a final check. And when she lets go of it, here it is going down into the pit. And you see these 14 periscope-like uh, pipes coming out. They carry the signals out of the 8,256 wires in the TPC to our electronics. And here's uh, one of the electronics board that Nevis and Brookhaven built. There are 150 of these. Uh, there's one in the pizza box uh, against the wall there. Uh, 150 of these, each one of them carries 64 signals, changes the pulse heights into uh, digital numbers that can be understood by a computer. This is the actual memory, the actual brain of this chip. It's a little computer chip that does all the work. And it then sends this on to a computer. 
Nowadays, we can control the experiment uh, from wherever we are. So although the experiment is at Fermilab, this is our control room here at Nevis in the building next door. Here's our postdoc, uh, Jose, and our student, Vic, checking seven screens to make sure that the experiment is working properly. And this then produces events, which are recorded by the computer. This is a neutrino interaction. The neutrino came here, hit, and produced these three tracks. And the other tracks you see is the background I told you about. Microboon is not on the ground, so there are a lot of cosmic rays going through. And there are, they come, some of them, at the same time as the neutrino interaction. And this makes uh, it more difficult to untangle the, the real physics you want. <laughs> But we can do this in three dimension. And you can see you can project the event in many directions. And you can really understand which part of the, all these tracks is the actual neutrino interaction. OK, uh, the last topic will be looking at neutrinos not for their properties, but more what can they teach us about other phenomena.